Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Revolutionary Improvement for Security and Compliance with IBM Mainframes. My name is Julianne Kennedy and on behalf of SHARE Headquarters, I would like to thank you for joining us today. SHARE is pleased to continue our webinar programming with this informative and educational event. Please note that presentation slides and recording will be available post-webcast at www.share.org. Today's presenters are Al Saret, Security Thought Leader, and Brandon Saret, Security Researcher at Maintegrity, Inc. We encourage you to submit questions throughout the event via the Q&A box on your webinar toolbar. These will be addressed at the end of the presentation. I'd now like to turn it over to Al and Brandon. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Julianne. Uh, and thank you very much for uh, everyone uh, attending, making time in a busy day. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to make uh, some real progress towards showing you what we think is a real revolutionary change in mainframe security. And with no further ado, we'll, we'll go right into what I think really is the business need. In 2019, we've already seen billions of records released uh, by way of breach. So looking at the Ponymon report, the IBM Ponymon report, uh, that surveyed over 500 organizations that had had breaches. They quickly determined that the length of time to detect a breach is a staggering 206 days, so longer than it was last year, and really more than six months. So we wonder why it is that the state of detection in the security world is so slow to respond. But beyond that, once it's detected, uh, we often think about 73 days, which is the average, so there are some that are longer and some that are shorter, but the average is 73 additional days to actually respond and recover. We thought we needed to address this problem. So we think mainframes remain very relevant. 7.7 .7 trillion credit card payments, 29 billion ATM transactions, 87% of credit card transactions all end up in a mainframe at some point or another. We think that it's important that you're able to respond quickly because at the end of the day, there's an immense amount of brand and reputational in, impact as well as expense. And these days, somebody gets fired when there's a problem of this magnitude. So what do we do about it? Well, we're focused really on internal security. And that really means for most environments, most enterprise environments, they have very good perimeter security. So we said to ourselves, well, how is it that problems continue to crop up if perimeter security is so darn good? So we looked at it and we said, well, maybe we need to look inside the wall and focus on insider problems. And we thought that file integrity monitoring, a basic uh, technology in this space, really gives us the ability to do that. So very simply, what file integrity monitoring is, we take a snapshot of whatever you want us to look at. So whether that's your system files, uh, whether it's JCL, whether it's executable or source programs. In particular, I think, pretty important that you're looking at the config members, especially when you think about multiple LPARs and multiple system images. Um, in addition to that, uh, you know, we look at uh, USS files, shell scripts, Java, uh, all of those kinds of things that are very important in a smoothly running operation. We take a snapshot of each one of those members and we store it away. We create a hashing key. We store the key away in our vault uh, in, in encrypted form. Later on, we can come back and run another high-performance scan, look at the same libraries and the same members, compare, create a new set of keys, compare those keys to the ones in the vault. If the ones, if they match, everything's fine. If they don't match, then we report an alert. And we'll talk a little bit about how we help you deal with that alert and how we help you fix the problem that it discovers. But what we really believe is 
This detects all kinds of problems that have already bypassed perimeter security. So we'll, we'll deal with that in a second. The other nice thing about uh, our implementation of file integrity monitoring is it integrates with uh, your standard security tools like your SIEM. So if you're using Splunk or QRadar or some of the other tools, um, you know, we simply uh, put our records into that environment and you can use that to do all your reporting and, uh, and your analysis. Or we can provide uh, a, a very um, focused response through our own GUI. So if you want to run uh, FIM Plus in a standalone mode, uh, or in a duplex mode where we inform the SIEM, but you also use its own forensics uh, to identify problems and identify solutions, uh, you can do that as well. And uh, we believe that it delivers blistering performance, which allows you to run these kinds of scans at, at least daily, maybe hourly in, in some cases, or for um, you know, very high impact uh, applications and very high impact system environments, maybe more frequently than that. Where do we fit in the security landscape? Well, a long time ago, mainframes were invented and we didn't need any security because you know, it was called electronic data processing and you know you had punch cards and that sort of stuff, but we had corporate applications and even in the old days we had SMF data. But in the last 30 years or so, a lot of time and money has been spent on firewalls and access control. So, you know, the three key ESMs in the mainframe environment do a very good job of access control and the firewalls certainly add another layer of uh, security beyond that. So in the broad majority of cases, we, we focus on letting the good guys in and keeping the bad guys out. But of course, the bad guys get a little smarter as we go along. So, you know, phishing and man-in-the-middle techniques uh, allow people to sniff out uh, user IDs and passwords. And once I've got that kind of information, then I can get into the system, even if I'm a bad guy on the outside. However, there's another kind of insider, and that's somebody who perhaps is an employee and a trusted employee, but runs into some financial problems and becomes a bad employee. And then, of course, other insiders are doing legitimate work, but, make, do it, but making updates in error. We built our product to deal with those three environments. So I'll go over that a bit uh, in more detail in a minute. As we went along, though, we, we kind of looked at this updates and error and, and errors that um, well-meaning people um, cause. And, we, and as an industry, we put in something called change control. And that slowed down the rate of change. Well, now, well, everybody's talking about speeding up the rate of change. But, you know, change control isn't really tied in in an effective manner to do that in most cases. In the security space, we, we really looked at this and we started to have blue teams and red teams and penetration testing and response teams. And, I, you know, a very common um, technique in um, the distributed environments is a is an SIEM like Splunk or QRadar that takes all of the security information and does a lot of analysis on it, puts it on a single screen, and keeps uh, management, risk, audit people informed as things are going along. But their primary user is the response team. So uh, even in that environment, if you think back to how long it takes to uh, detect a problem and react to it, in the mainframe context, probably that's not working in an ideal manner. So we decided to bring in FIM Plus and tie all of the other elements together. So with FIM Plus, yes, we do use the scanning technique to identify every single change that's taken place on the mainframe. But when we find a, a, a problem, we have the ability to go and fetch SMF information that is relevant to that problem. So when we identify a problem, we go directly and look at the access records and see 
who did it or what uh, user ID uh, affected this change. We can also directly go and dynamically go to the change control system, find out was it approved? Was there an approved change for this application or this service um, at the time when the change was made? Well, if we detect a problem, uh, then we can send an alert directly via text or email to the response team. And the response team actually, you'll see in a second, can just click on the, uh, uh, the on-demand GUI that we have and see all of the information. But at the same point as, as at the same time as us running in a fail-safe mode uh, to correct, uh, uh, to provide information directly to the response team, we can also provide information to the SIEM. So you can manage the FIM product from whichever environment you want to. We're here to fix typical security gaps. And some of those are people issues. Skill sets differ between mainframe and other systems. Um, so those people with in-depth skills in the mainframe probably can do all of the work that we do in an automated manner manually. And it wasn't take that much longer. Uh, but if you're integrating new security staff and you're integrating newer mainframe uh, support staff, that knowledge takes years to develop. So we prefer to do this in a completely automated manner, fetching all of the relevant information and displaying them, displaying that in our GUI. So that no matter whether you're uh, somebody that's existing and wants a 3270 environment to look at, or whether you're somebody newer and more comfortable with a GUI, we provide all the relevant information in one look. And I'm going to show you that in a second. Um, another issue that we try to fix is antiquated tools. These tools do a good job of, of guarding the perimeter, but they really don't focus on insiders. So that's where the, the key part of FIM comes to bear. And they tend to be labor intensive. They don't have the type of automated forensics that FAM Plus has. So we think that that's a major change to how the business is conducted <clears throat> in the security space for mainframes. If we don't have the underlying FIM data, we don't know. We, every time we scan something and we find that it hasn't changed, we write a success record. That means we always know when the last good date we saw a particular module in uh, was. That gives us a key piece of knowledge. When did the attack start? Well, if, if all of the changes of, if all of the success records tell us that yesterday everything looked good and today it doesn't, we only have to look at the affected components, which we identify one by one, I, and we only have to look at one day's worth of information for that. So it means that the analysis process of things is vastly shortened as opposed to wondering when the last good, uh, the last good member update took place or when it was safe to go back to. And you'll see how important that is in a minute. We, of course, update the SIEM. And we can validate many alarms from other systems that merely look for suspicious activity. We actually can say, did the module change or not? Did the config member change or not? And you'll see in a second how we can actually drill right down to the specific member in a text file, like a configuration um, set on ParmLive or something like that, to ensure right, and show you graphically in real time exactly what the changes were. Uh, and then, of course, uh, this is very important in complying with PCI, HIPAA, FASIMA, NIST, GDPR, many, many compliance improvements, and identified specific controls within these environments. So I'm going to ask uh, Julianne to bring up the uh, poll question at this point.
and I'm going to ask you how important is compliance when in your environment. So when I say when compliance is critical, if we fail a, a compliance audit, somebody gets fired. If compliance is something that you care about is required, then maybe raises and bonuses are affected. But I just want you to put in here <clears throat> how important compliance is. If you have, uh, if you are processing credit card information, someone in the organization at a very high level, as um, CIO or perhaps even CEO or chief risk uh, manager, signs off on a document that says, we comply with the security standards laid out by PCI. So if you're dealing with credit card um, information, I, I think compliance becomes non-optional and becomes very important. Um, and you'll help us determine uh, how that works. Okay, uh, how, does, how does FIM really work? Well, we like to talk about a four-click incident response. So if we detect a problem, uh, we send an email or a text to those specified in the uh, support group or the, the uh, response team, and it simply comes in like any other email. So all I have to do when I get one of those emails, I click on the email, and up pops our GUI, or or, your, or the browser interface. So when the alert is received, I mean, I don't have to think about anything. I actually just click the email, and we understand where the last good scan was and where the current scan time is, and we just go and fetch all of the SMF records between, the, uh, between those in that interval. So. I don't really have to spend a lot of time thinking about where is the SMF, what's relevant, which component does this apply to, none of that stuff because FIM Plus does all that automatically for you. Another click actually goes and fetches information from your change control system. In this particular example, uh, the change control system was ServiceNow. So we can go there and we can say, was this approved? Was there a relevant change? Uh, in this case, you can say you can say, "Oh, there was no there was no change number that um, applied to that particular change." So that's an unapproved change. That means this mismatch here is red. If I see a red control block, it means I better do something. This is a very high risk situation. So we've already screened out all of the ones that were correct, all of the ones that um, were uh, approved. In fact, actually, if it was an approved change, uh, this, would, this would still be a mismatch, but it would turn out in blue. But the, the second click reveals an awful lot of information about whether it was approved or not. Third click is very clever. So in the previous slide, you could see on the GUI, there was a little button that said compare. In the example case that we had, there was an update to the TCPIP definition table. And when we click that compare button, I can see exactly what the configuration was when it was last trusted on that uh, last good date. And I can bring up right in parallel, color coded, what was the change when the suspect component was modified when we found it changed. Now, in this particular case, it's a little bit um, uh, interesting that in one case, the IP address had changed from New York to Russia. We think that you know, that would probably be something you'd want to know about. But being able to do that in stream with one click lets me look at the exact change. So if it was just a, a change to a comment or something like that, you know, it's probably not anything I need to worry about. But if it's a big change like this, man, I better do something about it right away. That's where click number four comes in. If I decide 
that I need to back that change out. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just go to the backup files that exist for that and pull the correct member out or members or uh, in fact, if necessary, an entire application or, or system image and we can rework, uh, we can recover that in the uh, in stream by preparing all of the recovery steps that are necessary. Then anybody that wants to do the recovery, anybody that's approved to do the recovery, can then just click on the files that they want to have restored and you're back in business. And it takes only a few seconds. So thinking about how long it goes through, take to go through four clicks uh, tells you exactly how long the restore should take. Now, in this particular case, here's the result. In a classic response, I have basic detection. So I try to keep the bad guys out, but you know, once someone inside, you know, it's not so easy to determine whether a change made by a valid ID was uh, approved or not. In the case of FIM Plus, we've got advanced detection, so we know that right away. We know why it was done. We can screen out false alarms where nothing really of any substance change with, with our compare or whatever. We can tell you exactly when the attack took place, in what interval that attack had to take place. We also know every member that got changed, so we know the scope. So if somebody breaks in and changes module number one, but that then cloaks itself and changes module number two, it's very difficult to determine that that uh, malicious change is still active in the system because you know perhaps there's no good record of module number two being updated. Whereas FIM Plus will always see that. And then of course, we show you the exact lines that change and can move directly into the uh, recovery assistant. Whereas in a manual process, I have to start taking uh, action in a manual manner. At the end of that, I can rescan, make sure that it matches my, my trusted state that's in the vault, uh, and verify that it's correct. So when I come back on the air, in a few seconds, uh, I've verified that everything's back in the uh, proper condition. Whereas when I do the restore by hand uh, or manually, we kind of have to hope that we got everything uh, at the right stage. Back to internal threats just for a second. Again, the, 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 the key guys that we're, or um, agents that we're dealing with are attackers from the outside the stolen credentials, insiders that go bad for, a, for many, many different reasons, and well-meaning staff making mistakes. So every single one of these things requires changes to something. So it could be JCL, it could be um, uh, C lists, it could be um, configuration parameters, or it could be executable modules. FIM plus scans them all. In addition to that, it has a, a personal uh, information finder. So there are lots of reasons why personal information might have been uh, taken into, for reporting purposes or something. You might have taken an excerpt from a customer master file. It might still be hanging around after uh, a number of years, or it might have been taken yesterday by somebody who intends to release those phone numbers and contact information, or perhaps credit card numbers, that sort of thing. So we can also kick off our, our PII finder, which looks for signatures for that kind of information, and then produces a report on the unauthorized uh, versions of personal information that is found. So the copying of uh, customer data, data can be spotted I, almost immediately. Now, uh, I, I really talked a, a, a bit about how um, FIM Plus works. What, what I want to focus a little bit on is why we think that that is important. We actually believe that most people have very well implemented perimeter defenses. 
So spending more time and more effort on the perimeter defense is probably a good idea, but it's starting to get to be a low payback proposition. Whereas most folks and most environments simply don't have good control of their insider threats. So we think that the high payback area in uh, security for mainframes these days is in controlling those inside threats because they are inherently more dangerous than somebody uh, trying to break in from the outside. We can identify changes in error. So if an application gets updated and uh, in the change window, window, the deploy team puts everything in and there's a problem on Monday morning, well, typically applications will say it was the deploy team that didn't put the right stuff in. And op the operations folks will kind of go, well, we didn't have the right backer, we didn't have the right testing tools, and we couldn't verify that the changes were ex put in exactly the way that they're supposed to be. So we got the wrong stuff from applications, for, for instance. We can identify all those changes. Within the change window, we can simply run another scan and just leave the, um, the, the verification of that whole process to FIM plus. A few seconds later, we'll say, oh, did it match the desired state, which we captured probably when the application came out of QA? Or is there something different? Are there some files we forgot to bring over? That can cause as big a problem as unauthorized stuff getting in that's supposed to get in. Somebody gets interrupted in the middle of the deployment process, doesn't get finished. That can be just as big an error. So FIM Plus can find errors that are overlooked as well as uh, being able to identify actual changes that are in, in some form of error. We can see exactly what content was altered. So again, for text-based files where a human being would want to have a nice color-coded compare uh, before and after picture or trusted and, and questioned um, picture, I, that can be very telling for, um, for those kinds of changes that, that need to go in. Uh, and, and you need to understand exactly what took place. This can run in a mainframe only mode or it can be in, uh, uh, integrated with your uh, enterprise tools. And of course, it really helps eliminate false alarms. One of the reasons we feel that it takes a long time to detect these kinds of problems is that there are many false alarms and people get numb to false alarms and they fail to follow up on those things. And then, you know, your credit card company phones somebody at the at at the at your enterprise and says we have a pattern of fraud here and it looks like it's associated with your company it's a terrifying call we want to be able to make sure that that never happens in the process of being better at handling insider threats we also become more compliant with PCI with NIST and to to a substantial extent with the intentions of the GDPR in Europe. So we strengthen specific controls, which means your compliance checklist should be better, but we also avoid problems underneath by actually strengthening the underlying security. And as a result, your compliance will be better, but your security will be better. Uh, we talked about the four-click look at all the forensic information uh, that you need. We think that that's important because it reduces the time from months uh, or at least weeks to seconds. And if you want to use this tool uh, to verify your deploy or, or verify the de DevOps tool chain, make sure that things that are going into production are already um, validated, prior to getting into production, then this would be a very good tool to do that. And we think we are the only guys in the world that provide this sort of capability for mainframes. So I'm gonna wrap things up here by just saying what we truly believe. We got into the business to make 
breaches a thing of the past. So we do that by trying to improve security by acknowledging that there are things that happen inside that can be um, a, a major problem, even if it isn't a malicious intent. So I'd like to offer you the opportunity to, to go into a deeper dive and find out more about how we specifically do these things. And we can schedule that any time that you want. I've, I've put our contact information at the bottom uh, of the screen. Uh, we're easy to get a hold of. So if you wanted to do a deeper dive or you wanted to have a follow-on uh, discussion, we'd be happy to do that. We also um, provide live demos if you want to see the actual real uh, in-stream demo. But we believe that running a free trial is pretty important. So uh, auto discovery and our zero admin functions make it very easy to run a free trial. But because the system is learning and is a, is a discovery tool on its own, it doesn't have to be configured in the first place. So we can go find the APF libraries. We can go find the LPA libraries. We can go find um, CICS uh, configuration parameters, TCP IP configuration parameters, because we look at things and detect where they are. Since we do that initially, it also means that there's no administrative function necessary to keep those things up to date, because we just run the auto discovery tool on a regular basis, keep that up to date. However, both of those things make it really easy to run a, a trial. And we say you should be able to trial this, we should, you should be able to install it in an hour, uh, you should get results in the second hour, and you should be able to complete your trial in one day. Now, big organizations, there's going to be a few other people involved. So I think in order to actually have a real trial, it would probably take a week or, you know, in some environments, you know, quite a bit more than that. But, uh, I mean, from a technical standpoint, uh, pretty straightforward to run a trial. So, again, if you call us, we can set something up. So, my last reminder here, as we saw on the first slide, most damage results from breaches that are over six months old. And, you know, those are the most dangerous kind because the data has been available and, and can be distributed widely in six months. So at the end, who really gets hung out? Who's got the problem? Well, probably it resides in the support organization at some level below the CIO. So I would want to make sure it's not you that gets hung out on the problem. But anyway, we, we firmly believe that mainframes are a high value target and that if you are going to prevent problems, today is a really good day to start. Anyway, I will uh, I'll leave it at that point. Uh, you know, we're 35 minutes into the discussion. I'd be happy to uh, carry things on, but uh, perhaps uh, we've got a couple of questions from the field that, uh, that we want to go through. Okay. Uh, we did end up with a couple of questions from the audience here. Um, the first one, ServiceNow normally has package names of Changeman, Endeavor, or CI/CD tools, uh, Urban Code Deploy Package, for instance. Will FIM also do a recursive search within the package to identify the components that have changed? The, sh the short answer is uh, today that uh, facility is not available, and in truth, if I had uh, I've been talking about uh, ServiceNow or uh, or even the SMF functions uh, a year ago, we wouldn't have had those available. However, uh, the development team here at Maintegrity has significant experience with Endeavor, with ISPW, uh, and with ChangeMount. So those tools uh, do, in fact, identify applications and all of the components that make up the applications. It is our intention, our stated direction, that all three of those products will be supported so that uh, the application support side of uh, FIM Plus can be enhanced uh, to the same level of auto discovery that uh, the system and uh, 
and subsystem environment is today. So right now, we, we use uh, uh, list catalog functions to understand what the applications are and then use an automated routine to load that information uh, into uh, the FIM parameter set. And, and so that's uh, how we deal with uh, application components in the short term. However, there will be a specific interface for all of ChangeMan, Endeavor, ISPW. Uh, okay, another one. Um, what ZOS file types do you support for the scan and comparing? Does that include all of these SAM types and database files such as DB2 tables or other databases? Yes, we support uh, sequential files. We support um, all kinds of um, library uh, PDS, PDSE files. In that we have not seen a need to support vSAM at this point. However, it's a relatively small change to the product, and if a customer came forward with that requirement, uh, we'd take that to the development team and we would prioritize it. Um, but today, we, the, the only thing that we uh, have not dealt with uh, is vSAM. However, we do support all of the uh, USS file systems, so HFS and ZFS, um, as well as uh, all the rest of the ZOS format. So for the FIM plus recovery module, will it use a roll, uh, will it use rollback of the SCM example um, change and endeavor or CD tools such as urban code? Uh, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that question, Brown. Uh, so will the recovery module um, use a, a rollback from the SCM? Uh, Today, uh, that's not implemented, but uh, the, uh, in fact, the recovery uh, assistant, uh, which is the function name, can actually uh, do a rollback from any source that you pointed at. We typically imagine that those are coming back from an HSM uh, environment, in which case we would format a, uh, uh, an H recover function or from backup tapes that are DSS or um, uh, FDR format, uh, which we have automated interfaces for. But uh, that's certainly not to say that it would, uh, wouldn't be possible to roll back from uh, an SCM-based capability. But that's sort of linked to the first question we had about supporting change on ISPW and, uh, and Endeavor. So, I believe that those would be linked. They are a stated direction. Uh, so it's just a matter of getting them up the list and for, the, uh, uh, for the development teams in terms of priority. And I'm quite certain that if uh, you know, one of our existing customers came back to us and said, uh, we need this function implemented, uh, we would give you a very short time frame in which that could be uh, built in an automated manner. Uh, thank you. Um, so, if one of our other tools raised an alert, um, would we be able to tie into your forensics process? Yeah, there's no reason whatsoever if uh, uh, one of the tools, like uh, or or your SIM, determines that there is an alert, it could simply kick off the. Um, FIM GUI in the same sort of manner uh, that we do with an email. So rather than using our alerting process to send an email or a text directly to the um, response team, which we kind of consider a fail-safe anyway, it could easily go through the SIEM, it could easily be um, generated in a way that someone would have a direct uh, link to the FIM plus GUI, and then the GUI would operate in exactly the same way uh, as a result of, of another program product uh, kicking off the alert, exactly the same as if FIM plus uh, initiated the alert itself. And you'd have all the same sort of forensics, you'd have all the same sort of recovery capability, <coughs> and you'd have the same speed of reaction. Uh, okay, uh, how big is the performance impact of using the software? 
we have we've worked hard uh, to make sure that scans can be run at any time of day uh, and and really that the impact is is really low and the way that we do that in part is by using the underlying technology that's available for for hash calculations and for security in the hardware itself so we actually ship all of the heavy lifting the heavy arithmetic to the crypto card so it's a single instruction to ask the crypto card to do work for us and as such we believe that most of the time um, you won't find FIM plus in in the top hundred program users in your environment and we think that even to run uh, a, a library like uh, APF lib which in a in a vanilla version that you get from IBM has 47,000 members. We think we know that running that environment, uh, running that library set takes less than one CPU second. So, uh, in the context of what you would do during the day, I mean, I think you probably keep that workload relatively uh, small and and high impact. So, stuff that you really need to look at. Um, you run real time whenever you want, and of course you can run a scan anytime you want. So if an auditor walks into your office and says, "Prove to me that everything that came out of QA is in production," you push a button, and kick off a scan, get the results back right in the GUI, and before uh, you know somebody can phone and ask you for something, uh, you already got the answer. So we believe that you will find that. CPU time and the amount of um, service units that FIM Plus uh, uses in your environment is truly negligible. So, Brandon, was there anything else uh, that we uh, needed to cover off before uh, before we wrap up the session? Um, just uh, one last question regarding uh, uh, regarding the automatic discovery function. Um, what exactly does it do? Okay, auto, auto discovery is actually quite an important part of FIM Plus, and I, I talked a little bit about it in the context of, of our zero administration initiative. In truth, there's a little bit of administration required because somebody still probably wants to look at the reports every now and then to make sure that things are, are, are going smoothly. But in terms of keeping itself up to date, it runs through the system to begin with. It scans your APF lives in the first two minutes of operation, unless, of course, you turn that default off. But I don't know why you would do that. The next thing it does is it looks for all of the other um, critical system libraries, runs those and scans those and makes sure that all of that information is uh, maintained in the, in the trust vault, in the uh, all of the keys are there waiting to be verified on the next run. The next thing it looks for is it interrogates Geos to find out where all the other subsystems are. Where, where is CICS running? Where are uh, the uh, important parameter lists for um, IMS or any of the other system tools? And then, uh, you know, again, using the catalog functions, we can run all of the applications that belong to a specific high-level qualifier, for instance, uh, within that environment. So we think that the auto discovery function is very complete. Uh, and that allows us a, a, a big step forward in terms of, of understanding the system and being able to automatically know what to check. So unlike you know, rack F where you're probably checking, you should be checking rules, you should be checking for who has what level of authorization and making sure that that's uh, consistent with uh, the, the current staffing for that user ID, that sort of thing. There's really no equivalent kind of admin function for FIM Plus. It's very, very much a learning system and a remembering system. So, uh, you know, we can really do a lot for you. I'd, I'd be excited to go uh, at, through this in your own environment 
and show you exactly how that runs. I think you find it quite exceptional. Okay, thank you very much. Um, one last question that I've just received. Um, regarding the restore from good versions, I assume this means there are backups. Where are the backups kept and when are they taken? We don't take a separate backups. We use the backups that are already in place for either system files or um, application files. We configure that uh, in the first couple of hours when, uh, when we put the system in. We make sure that we understand the interval in which those backups are taken, and we can determine from the last good date when we have to go back to in order to cause that restore to take place. So we can restore from a variety of different uh, uh, backup environments. Uh, as I said, we often find uh, HSM as one of them, but it could be um, a, a application backup uh, that um, is customized to your environment. And we just point our uh, recovery tool at that backup and say, you know, get the appropriate modules from uh, this time period or this specific backup tape. So I hope that was helpful. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that appears to... Uh, so uh, one more question. Uh, do you use hash keys to detect changes? I'm sorry, what was that? Do, we, do, you... do you use hash keys to detect changes? Yes, we do use hash keys to detect changes, uh, and we can keep baseline uh, uh, copies of members so that we can do a subsequent compare, uh, but typically the, the vault, uh, FIM plus vault, uh, contains hash keys so that we can see exactly what content changed, and then uh, assuming it's um, visible for a human being, we can invoke or the, the user can invoke our, uh, our in-stream compare so we can find out uh, exactly what the differences are. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that appears to be all of the questions that we have received from the audience. Well, that's great. I hope that uh, I'm, I'm glad that we, uh, we got some uh, um, some good questions from the field. I, I think this is an exciting change to how security is dealt with uh, on mainframes. I have just scratched the surface in terms of its uh, technical beauty, and I'd uh, love to have a discussion at length with uh, anybody that's uh, interested in a um, more detailed view of uh, FIM+. Plus. I think you'll find it very clever, and I think you'll find it very useful. So I would uh, wish you all uh, very good luck with uh, security and uh, hopefully there are no breaches that occur anywhere in your environment. But let me assure you that uh, we would love to help you uh, make certain that that's not going to happen on your mainframe. So please feel free to call me whenever, uh, whenever it's convenient for you. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, and thank you for everybody involved, uh, to everybody involved in putting these, this presentation together. Well, that concludes today's webcast. Thank you so much, Brandon and Al, for coming online with us today. And thank you for everyone who attended. This feature will soon be available on the SHARE website. And there is a survey right after this webinar for you to complete. And we really appreciate your feedback. Thanks again, and have a great day.